Our guest uh, in, our, in today's issue of the day program is CEO, that means uh, the director of AMROP Partnership and a member of AMROP Global Executive Board, Mr. Jose Ignacio Leun. Welcome to our program. Thank you so much. Mr. Leun, uh, as you see, the environment today is wonderful here. We are sitting in a luxurious restaurant, center of uh, Bratislava, one of the best restaurants. Uh, in Bratislava, close to the Roland statue, everything's wonderful. Christmas market, it's it's fine, but in the world it doesn't look like that, and it's not uh, wonderful like that. We have a crisis, security crisis, uh, migration crisis. Uh, if you write the sign of crisis in the Chinese verbs, there are two signs: it's uh, danger and opportunity. Do you perceive? Uh, the world crisis also from this perspective? Um, yes, definitely. I would say that in, in any crisis there are, like in the coins, there are two sides. One could be considered as a risk, but obviously there is another side that is opportunity. And I would say that these days, uh, uh, with every crisis situation that we have, I would say that we have to be also optimistic and to look at the things in a positive manner and to see how really we can, we can exit the crisis, the crisis and also success. Um, and I think today we have, uh, these days we have uh, obviously some very uh, tough situations uh, from many points of view, humanitarian, military, crisis and situations. But um, definitely we, we, I think we need to look at it in a positive manner and try to find solutions that uh, make us better and stronger after the resolution of those. So yes, I would agree with the Chinese approach, meaning that in every crisis there is always a risk, but it's always, uh, always an opportunity. And I would say that we can take the lessons from the recent crisis, saying that uh, who has survived the crisis at the end of the day is much better and, uh, and better positioned for the future challenges. We will not talk about politics and politicians. Uh, you are not giving advices to them. You are giving advices uh, to uh, businessmen and uh, to the business. So uh, from the business point of view, uh, we can understand uh, this, uh, what you said before, in a way that those who surrender uh, to danger will perish and those who persist and are innovative will survive. Absolutely. Um, I would say that if uh, one of the lessons that we can take these days uh, with the, the situation that we are uh, going through is that uh, definitely resistance is the must, but also I would say flexibility and innovation really um, are also very needed these days. Um, we need to find uh, new solutions for the new situations that we are facing. The world is changing constantly at in, in a speed that is definitely much higher than, than before. Uh, and for, for handling that situation, uh, you need to be uh, flexible, you need to be resistant, you have to be innovative, so you have to take a completely different approach because the situation that you are facing in every market, in any economy, is very different from before. Therefore, the old recipes and the old solutions um, don't apply anymore and you have to be really innovative with a different approach and mindset to really face and, and, and survive in those situations. Mm -hmm. But it's, it is not a long time ago we have struggled uh, with financial crisis, uh, crisis of trust in the financial markets. It seems like we survived without big losses. But uh, why we did succeed? Uh, I did uh, not notice any ingenious solutions except of uh, a very, very popular bailouts. Uh, it was the world of the year bailout, wonderful word and uh, so-called quantitative uh, easing, which means uh, nothing else but decreasing the value of money by increasing the amount in circulation. Why did we survive? Are we at the end of the financial crisis? Are we over? I would say that the financial crisis has uh, given us in the recent years some very good lessons. Uh, if you allow me to put Spain as an example, in Spain the financial crisis has taken many institutions uh, out of the market. They have literally disappeared. So in some cases the solution has not been easy. It has meant the dis disappearing of some ent entities that didn't do properly before, but also that they couldn't find the right solution for their existence and surveillance. So I would say that um, in some cases the crisis has been really tough and has made uh, those not good players to, to really not survive anymore. Some solutions perhaps may sound not so, uh, so innovative and so new, but I would say that all of them have meant effort, uh, a tough work, and, and I would say that in some cases uh, completely new structures. Again, if you allow me to use Spain as an example, now we have these days what we call the bad bank, 
that is the first time in Spain, the history of Spain, that such an institution has been created. I would say it's an innovative solution because uh, never existed before. Uh, perhaps maybe not the best solution and the perfect solution, but I would say that these days we need really, as I said before, to find uh, and to take a different approach in order to fix the problems that we are facing these days. So the financial crisis is a very good example because I would say that uh, in most of the European countries and even in the United States, the financial crisis has been very present in the, in the recent years and the solutions and the way to tackle that, 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 uh, that, that crisis has been different depending on the, on the different needs. In Europe, we have the Central Bank of Europe and also the, some of the measures could sound as uh, not so much innovative, but at the end of the day, I think they are really helping us to fix the problem. But I would prefer to say that this has to take, be taken as an example and to learn some lessons for the future. I think uh, we are really doing so and we are taking some lessons from the past. Um, and if you look at what financial institutions are, do, are doing these days, even the central bank, they are taking completely different measures, the stress testing and so many things that they are really uh, improving the financial sector because it's considered to be a key one for any economy. So I would say that the financial sector from now to the future will be completely different than what used to be before. And therefore, I would say there is a kind of innovation and different approach to crisis because the lessons learned in the recent years, I think, are taking us to a different position for facing the, the challenges in the near future. So your example about the financial crisis is a good one, and I think we can take really very important and significant lessons of what we did wrong, what is being done these days, and also, and more important, what to do in order to prevent and to avoid future failures and future problems in the future. Yeah, but do you think bailouts have been uh, that innovative uh, idea? Wasn't uh, that uh, that the taxpayer was, uh, at the end of the day, uh, Obviously, you, you may have always the discussion uh, why uh, the taxpayers have to pay for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the crisis in the financial institutions. But at the end of the day, what I think is really underlying that, that decision is that the financial sector is so important to any economy that uh, the government, any government, cannot allow uh, the financial uh, system to fall. Therefore, yeah, there is always pain when you restructure any, any given sector at any economy, and therefore it's uh, somehow a part of the, the cost that has to be taken by the taxpayers. But again, as I said before, in some cases, uh, in some countries, are being the, 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 the equity, uh, equity shareholders, really the ones that lost all their money because putting the money in the, in the wrong, on the not properly handled institutions. So I think there has been some suffering and, pay for, and pain uh, for, for everybody in this, in this situation, even when in some cases I would agree with you that ta taxpayers have been assuming most of the, of the cost of those restructuring in the financial sector. And uh, are the solutions definitive? Uh, will the financial crisis, uh, is there a chance that it will come again or is it over and the solutions are perfect to... Uh, it's my, it's my view this? that uh, these days because of the evolution and how the society is, uh, is evolving, I would say nothing is definitive, nothing is guaranteed, nothing is, is finished. Uh, this is just an evolving situation. There will be more measures, there will be more needs. The markets will be evolutioning according to, to the different nature and size. So I think this is just uh, the temporary solution that has been found in this moment in time for fixing the problems that we are facing these days. But probably that in two or three years' time, today's solutions will not be valid anymore and will not be applicable in the near term. So I would say that we will be constantly evolutioning and we will see new measures, new structures, new approaches, new institutions, new regulations. I would say that uh, these days, the central uh, states and the official agencies are taking uh, new measures that were not expected, not even foreseen some, some years ago. And therefore, I would say this is something that is, will be very present in our lives from, from now on, that everything is in, is in a change. Uh, things are changing uh, very quickly. The, the internet of the things and the internet of these days really is, is asking us to work in the same speed. And I would say um, uh, that no solution will be definitive and we cannot assume that the problem is completely fixed because tomorrow we'll be facing a completely new situation or a different problem, and therefore we have to be flexible and open-minded enough to really face all the problems that will be problems or the situations that will, will come to us, will be new, and therefore we'll find to, we will need to find new solutions for facing those properly. Well, uh, we didn't want to talk about politics, but uh, in the global world, everything is uh, connected to everything. Yeah. Uh, we currently face other crises, a security crisis. It was yesterday when a Russian airplane was shot down by a Turkish airplane. 
uh, and uh, also the threats of uh, the Islamic State and uh, are, are very, very uh, much present uh, also. Migration crisis due to the uh, continuing flow of, flow of people coming to Europe. Uh, with regard to those crises, do you see any opportunities and, uh, to find uh, original and long-term solutions or to also for business, uh, for companies which uh, you are giving advice to? Well, I would say some of the problems that you have named are really uh, significant problems are, and are a very good reflection of how society and the world is evolving these days. Um, uh, I don't have the solution for uh, any of those uh, significant problems, uh, but we need as a society that really need, need to fix them from all points of view, including and mainly the humanitarian situation that some people is facing these days in the world. Those are really, really serious. Um, and I would like to think that uh, we can find the right solution from all points of view in order to fix that problem. But in any case, that situation is a, somehow is a reflect of, of, our, of what our customers are facing these days. Companies are constantly under, under threats and evolution and changes because their market, their customers, their product, their competitors are changing constantly. So I would say that uh, everything is, is uh, the globalization is affecting all of us in, in many ways. Um, so what is happening in the political terms, I would say, is also a reflection of what is happening in the corporate world. Uh, our customers, our managers, uh, all are all under uh, a changing environment. They need to adapt constantly. They need to face new problems. They need to face new solutions. So uh, that is also affecting us because we are somehow uh, advisors to, to them and therefore we also need to find the right solutions for advising them in order how to fix the problem. So uh, I would say the globalization is taking part in everywhere and is affecting all of us um, and the more we are or the closer we are to the, our customers the more impacted we are and the more uh, demanded we are to really give them support and advice regarding those key issues for them so this is uh, is this is the new game this is part of the new uh, of the new situation in the world and i would say this is going to be um, uh, lasting forever and ever uh, i don't think that will be a finished uh, solution for anything so it will be a completely evolution and we also will be, uh, 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 will be under that pressure. And uh, our business, our solutions, our approach, our everything will be also affecting. Because if we are so close to customers and this environment is changing constantly, uh, we are part of that environment and we also need to change. Mm -hmm. But do you think that uh, this uh, could go also to another way, that the globalization would be uh, not that fast, uh, uh, that it will stop in, in one point because of uh, those problems? No, I would say, if any, the other way around. I would say globalization will become uh, deeper, bigger and faster. And I would say that um, any company, any sector, any anything will be uh, significantly affected more and more each day because of the globalization and the access to information, to the internet and to everything. So I don't, I don't foresee that the globalization will be stopping, but just the opposite, uh, because uh, the world is changing so, so, so quickly and so deep that I would say the, uh, that everything will be significantly uh, affected. So I expect the globalization to begin to become sorry uh, or to, co to continue to be the key issue for, for all of us in order how to handle our businesses and how to face the new, the new challenges. Mm -hmm. So uh, becoming too local, I would say it uh, would be a mistake because now every single business and every single issue can be really taken to the global level and therefore you cannot think only locally. You have to think globally, perhaps to act locally, depending on your on your market and your nature. But globalization will be uh, uh, very high in the in the agenda priorities for for any corporation. So maybe also the migration crisis is a sign of globalization. Absolutely, um, I would say that uh, global is, uh, sorry migration these days is a reflection of uh, some specific problems taking place in some areas of the of the world. But at the same time, I would say that people is, is looking at the globalization, the new social trends and the things that are happening in other markets, in other countries. And people really want to become part of that globalization and that innovation process. And, and to my knowledge, some of the reasons why people is really migrating is not only to save their lives, what is really a pity and is really an issue, but in some cases is because they are really aiming to, to have and even to give to the next generation a better life on the, on the places that they are these days. So uh, for me, migration is, a, is the consequence, is one of the consequences of the really the globalization that is taking place in, in, in the world. Everybody now can really see and watch what is happening in another part of the world, for good or for bad. And therefore, migration is a reflect of that globalization and the, and the flow of the information that is accessible 
to everybody in these days. But your business is to find uh, really good leaders, experienced, uh, experienced guys who can lead a global company uh, and uh, probably uh, not a lot of uh, guys like this are in this flow of migrants. You cannot find them in between of them, like uh, hundreds of them or something. Probably it will be uh, Minecraft, uh, maybe uh, people who will work at uh, lower levels of, of work, but uh, not uh, in the, at the highest positions. Or uh, it's, it's, I wouldn't be so true. sure. Um, um, it is our lesson learned these days that Thailand is, is anywhere, is at any level. Uh, and um, I would say that people, really talented people, you can find um, um, at, at, at any place. So why not to think that these people that is migrating these days, they really are, um, are, are talented people, and also that they have something that these days is even more important, that is the approach, the commitment, the attitude. They are really looking desperately in some cases for a new life, and that may take them to really um, to, to, to work and to do things in a, in a very different way compared to others. So I would expect that the, the, the people that is coming, for example, to Europe these days, in some cases, they will be really succeeding because uh, assuming that they have a certain qualifications, in addition to that, you add something that is uh, very important, that is attitude. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't deny that in some years, uh, those people coming to Europe will really make a, a different uh, impact on, on our societies and some of them for sure will be succeeding. So for us, that is also could be considered as a talent pool for the future, for sure, um, because again, they are really uh, asking for a new life and they are so much committed to their surveillance, but also to their success, that in some cases I'm sure they will be uh, very talented people for, even for us to recruit in the, next, uh, in the next time. And how and where do you search for future leaders and directors? Does, uh, does your search include, uh, for instance, startups, stars which is a very popular uh, world today, or um, other businesses uh, which are currently uh, so popular? Uh, our obligation whenever a customer retain our services is uh, really to look for the best talent no matter where they are. So uh, I would say that for us what type of company they work at is not a restriction. Uh, what we are looking is for certain characteristics from a personal and professional point of view. Uh, therefore we don't, we don't uh, disregard people whether they are working in a state-owned company, in a, in a private-owned company, in a family-owned company, whether it's a startup. The size of the business is really not a threat these days or a restriction. We are really looking for the talent, no matter in what form they are and where they are working. Um, so one of the advantages that we provide our customers when we do a search for them is that we really try to do the best possible mapping and therefore the information that we provide to them uh, demonstrates how deep and, and wide we have done our work and our search and at the end of the day we come to some conclusions and some names that are, in our opinion, uh, and according to the customer needs, are the most talented people in order to fix the problems that they, they have to face. So for us uh, these days um, uh, we have to look at any single place where we think the talent may be, no matter what. So you are looking for talents because, uh, I beg your pardon, I don't like uh, uh, the words human resources. It's like a material or, or something uh, which is living but uh, doesn't have a face. Uh, so you are uh, searching for individualities and personalities, not for human resources. Well, that could be an approach and that could be a definition. Definitely, at the end of the day, we are looking for people that is able of fixing the problems of our customers according to their needs and to their, to their definitions. Uh, so from that point of view, whether we call it human resources or talent, I think it's, it's a matter perhaps of, of, of denomination. Um, but I think what, what is really important these days is that... Um, uh, Companies are looking for a certain profile of people um, and, and because of what is happening these days, the globalization and the speed of the changes, um, uh, the type of profiles that we are looking for have changed con uh, uh, significantly when compared to the previous years because now the companies have to face different problems and therefore they need to find different talent, different resources to face, to handle and to fix the problems that they are facing. So for us, our business has also changed recently um, as a result of the change in the, the customer needs and the, and the customer uh, uh, problems. And we're also noticing that 
and there is also change in the attitude and the profiles and the experience. Um, so everything is under under a change, and in our case, our business as well as the as the talent people that we work with is also changing constantly and significantly. So for us, it's also a challenge being able of adapting to the to the new times and also solving the problems of, of our customers. So it's a, a it's a chain in that change of of, uh, of uh, circumstances and environment. Well, um, uh, you know it. Uh, everybody knows it that uh, money is very important in business. And I've met a lot of guys who, who were telling me, yeah, I could do a business if I would have money. Uh, a startup mainly needs a good idea. And it's enough because a good idea uh, makes uh, good choices and uh, the people will buy something. But uh, if you go to mid-cap and uh, other companies which are on the, on the, on the mid-level, uh, there you would need more money. And, uh, and uh, people, uh, shareholders which would uh, give you the opportunity to spend their money and to, to make uh, your business bigger. But if you go to a global company, it's a huge amount of money you need uh, to run this uh, uh, company. In spite of that, uh, are you uh, convinced that it's just invention and good ideas which are necessary for good business? Definitely. Um... I would say that these days, um, uh, what you really can get very easily, and understand please what I mean by easily, is money. What, you are, what we are missing, what sometimes is really missing is, is the idea, is the positioning, is the entrepreneurial spirit, is the innovation. But if you really have the good idea and a good approach, I would say money will come because investors these days uh, are, are so different and so big that really what they, in some cases what they are really looking is precisely for that, for the idea. Um, and, and also, and now coming to our uh, activity, in some cases what you really need is the people to make those, those ideas to really take place and to happen. So um, should we have to choose uh, which one is the most important thing? I would say ideas first, team will come later, the, the people and the resources to implement, and for me money will be the less important thing. It's needed, of course, depending on the, on the project. Um, but sometimes what we are facing is the lack of, uh, of talent, the lack of ideas and the lack of uh, the real capacity to implement and to develop the, the, and to make things happen. Um, so I wouldn't say that money these days is, uh, is so important, it's so dramatic. I would say that these days uh, what we are facing is significant scarce, uh, scarcity of, of talent, talented people and also the teams to implement and to develop those, those ideas. Um, and that's one of the goals that we, we need to, to, uh, to pursue for our customers is of finding the right people for fixing the problems or bringing new ideas, innovating their business, doing the things in a different way. And for doing that, you need new approaches. You need different people and new competencies compared to the previous times because now the environment is so, so, uh, so uh, different that you cannot do things in the same way that used to be done before. So ideas and a uh, proper team to implement, I think, is really the key, the key factor for the success. Money will come. And do you think also the, the rich guys are thinking this way? I can remember from the history, for example, the cooperation in between Mr. Westinghouse and uh, Nikola Tesla. And we can see where Westinghouse is today, building uh, atomic aircraft and, and, and uh, 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 atomic uh, silos and, and, and everything. Uh, do you think the rich people are ready to invest uh, to, uh, to the guys with good ideas? I think so. There are many, uh, many initiatives that are really looking for good ideas. There are very good examples in, in many countries that really the, uh, the, uh, the people with uh, the rich people, as you call them, are definitely in some cases really willing to invest in new ideas, in new approaches with uh, the startups, with the young generations, people that think differently from us, that act differently, that are looking to the world in a, in a different way. And I would say that in some cases, they really they get the support uh, from, from those uh, investors, rich investors. Not only individuals, but I would say even uh, funds of all nature and, and characteristics. So I would say that today there is really a clear move in order to develop what is called the, the startups and the uh, business angels. So I would say there is a clear movement of really putting money in, in, in the new ideas in your business. And I would say the best example for that is what is happening in California and in, in the Silicon Valley. If you really go there, you notice how, how people is really willing to invest in new ideas, new plans, new projects. Um, 
and by the way, if those ideas and, and projects they don't they don't work, uh, there is nothing happens for just the closing them and starting again. The failure and how to handle those situations is is changing as well. Failure is not taken anymore as a as a key issue. And if you fail, you will not success again. It's just the opposite. Sometimes the more you fail, the more chances you have to to success in the future. So that kind of things that are happening, uh, as an example in Silicon Valley, I think can be taken and is already being exported to other countries. Uh, even at the gover governmental uh, level, there are some uh, uh, projects that are really uh, supporting the entrepreneurial spirit of, of the young generations. So I would say um, that's one of the lessons of the recent crisis that we need really to take new initiatives, new approach. Technology is driven our lives significantly these days. So any kind that is uh, technology oriented that makes our life easier in, in, in a more uh, comfortable way, but more technological way, I would say is receiving support money-wise, but also in terms of structure and, 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 and resources from all, uh, from all points of view. So, uh, uh, yes, I, think I would say that's a trend that is um, more and more growing each day, and I would say that would be clearly one trend for the, for the future development. Mr. Leun, at uh, the end of our interview, I have to say that it's, it's wonderful to see a guy which uh, has a positive uh, way of thinking and uh, this positive way of thinking is in undestructible in, in uh, your words and, and uh, what do you say? Thank you very much for this interview. My pleasure. It's a pleasure being here with you. So thank you for your time, for your questions. And yes, I'm always uh, positive. I think the, the glass is more than, more than full and uh, we need to think positively in order to, to fix the problems that we have. We have some important ones these days, but I think that only with a positive approach and constructive approach we can really handle and solve for good the problems and the situations that we are facing. So thanks to you for your time, for your questions. It's a pleasure being here in Bratislava. So uh, thank you so much. Have a nice day. Thank, Thank you. you.